Hello and welcome to video 3 in our 3 part course on Mesh Fusion in Modo. If you haven't watched the first two videos, I'd recommend watching them to get an idea of what Mesh Fusion is, how it works and how it was used to create the midsole of this shoe. In this video, I'll be going over how we can use Mesh Fusion to create the outsole and tread of our shoe. Looking at the shoe in relation to our reference image, we don't actually have any mesh that can be used as a base for the outsole. Luckily, we can actually use a lot of the meshes that we already created to create that base mesh. So the first thing that I'm going to do is double click my fusion item to select my source mesh for the midsole and then navigate to the fusion utilities tab to duplicate it as a non-fusion item. I'm then going to quickly rename it so I know that it's now the source mesh for my outsole and we have a good base to work with that perfectly fits our midsole. The next thing that we need to do is shape up this mesh just like we did with the midsole. Because we already have created a cutter for the bottom of our midsole, we can actually just duplicate that and then have the duplication act as the top of our midsole. So to do that, I'm going to select the bottom cutter for my midsole by double clicking the patch it left at the bottom of my midsole fusion item and then go back to the fusion utilities tab and duplicate that as a non-fusion item as well. I'm then going to quickly rename that to outsole top just so that I can differentiate between the cutter of my midsole and the cutter for the outsole. Now that we have a base mesh and a top cutter, I'm going to select the base mesh in the items list and then in the fusion tab, press the new fusion button to turn it into a fusion item. Once that's been converted, I'm going to double click my fusion item to select the source mesh and then select the cutter and apply subtraction. Okay, so the subtraction has been added, but the wrong side of the mesh has been cut out. If I quickly turn on the midsole fusion item, you can see that the side of the mesh that we actually want to make the outsole is now gone. Don't worry, this is a really easy fix. All we need to do is select the cutter in the items tree so that we can see the mesh operations apply to it. Select the curve extrude in the mesh ups window so that we can see the properties of the operation. In the properties window, all we need to do is tick the invert polygons option and our fusion item has been updated. So now that we have a chunk of mesh that fits snugly with our midsole mesh, we need to create another cutter so we can shape up the bottom of our outsole. To do this, we'll be repeating the same process that we followed in video 2. So as a recap really quickly, I'm going to go to my left view by holding down control space and selecting left so I can draw a flat curve and then press N to create a new mesh item. Once that mesh item has been created, I'm going to rename it so I can keep my items list organised. Next, I'm going to select the B-Spline tool from the Create tab and then start drawing out the shape of the bottom of my outsole. Once I'm happy with my curve, I'm going to drop the tool and then navigate to the top view and move my curve so that it's sat next to my fusion item. Once that's been repositioned, I'm going to press N again and create another new mesh item and name that one Outsole Driver. I'm then going to grab the curve tool from the create tab and then draw out a straight line that goes from one side of my mesh to the other. Once that's been created, we're going to go back to the outsole cutter mesh and then apply a curve rebuild and a curve extrude mesh up by clicking the add operator button and then selecting it from the list. Assign the driver in the extrusion mesh up to be the outsole driver mesh and then press OK. Once the extrusion has occurred, turn off the start and end caps and then we can double click our fusion item to select our source mesh and then select our new cutter and apply a subtraction operation. So the first thing that I want to do is cut out that trapezoid shape from my outsole. Because we already created this shape so we could cut it from the midsole, I'm just going to double click the patch that the subtraction created from my midsole fusion to select the source mesh. Once that's selected, I'm once again going to go to the Fusion Utilities menu and duplicate as a non-fusion item. Now that that's been duplicated, I can double click my outsole fusion item to select the source mesh and then shift click the trapezoid to select that as well and apply a subtraction operation. Now that we have a solid base for our outsole, let's get to making the tread of the shoe. The first thing that I want to do is go into the bottom view so that we can take a look at our reference image. So this might look a bit intimidating at first, but all we really need to do for most of this tread is create a single mesh to act as a cutter and then use the duplicate as subtraction option to flesh it out. To start, let's create a mesh that we can use to base our duplications on. 
If I quickly switch to my left view, we can actually see that the grooves in the tread are quite similar in shape to the trapezoid that we made for the big subtraction at the back of the sole. Instead of creating a new mesh, I'm actually just going to select that trapezoid shape in the items list and then use the duplicate as non-fusion item operation again. Once that's been duplicated, I'm going to scale my mesh so it's smaller and then stretch it out so it roughly matches the reference and then rotate it a bit so that the top edge follows the curve of the top edge of my outsole. I also know that this isn't going to cut through the whole of my shoe, so I'm going to switch to the top view again and then scale it so it goes through the whole of my shoe. I'm also going to quickly rename this mesh as well so I can keep track of what mesh is doing what. Once I have everything resized and repositioned, I'm going to double click my fusion mesh to select the source mesh and then select my tread and apply subtraction. Once that's applied, I'm going to double click the patch left by the subtraction so that I have the source mesh selected and then go to the fusion utilities tab and duplicate as subtractive. Once that's duplicated, I'm going to translate my mesh so it's still following the curve of my outsole. I'm now just going to repeat this process until I have the tread fully carved out. Alright, now that we have a solid base for our tread, let's take a look at the reference image again so we can see what else needs to be carved out of our outsole. So, in the tread, there are three other things that need to be subtracted and some text which we can use the embossing tools on. The first thing that I'm going to tackle is this round shape that cuts the outsole. For this bit, I'm actually just going to grab a Q-Ellipsoid 2 from the Fusion Ready Presets menu, resize and reposition it, and then subtract it from the outsole. We now have a nice round shape cut out of our tread. Going back to the bottom view, the next part of this tread that we need to cut out is this diamond shape in the back of our outsole. To create this shape, we're going to hold down shift and then select a cube from the create tab. Make sure to rename this new mesh and then resize it so it's roughly the same size as the diamond shape in the reference image. Now we're going to rotate the cube by 45 degrees so that it's more of a diamond shape. This can be done by pressing R to enable the rotate handles and then eyeballing it, or by typing in 45 in the Y rotation field in the properties tab. We're now going to grab the top edge of the cube and drag it out so that it matches the shape of the reference image a bit more, and then grab the two side edges and adjust them as well so that the top is a bit more squat and the bottom is elongated. I'm also just going to quickly chamfer the outside edges of this shape just to soften it up a bit. Looking at the reference image again, this shape actually needs to be hollowed out, but I want to hang onto this mesh so we can use it again to create that inner subtraction as well. So before we hollow it out, we're going to select the item in the items list, right click it, and then go to duplicate, duplicate. For the time being, I'm going to hide this item in the viewport by clicking the eye icon next to it in the items list. So now that we have a copy of the diamond, let's hollow out the visible one so that we can create the design in the back of the shoe sole. To do this, delete the bottom face of the diamond visible in the viewport. Once deleted, we're going to select the top face and press Shift B to activate the bevel tool. Once activated, we're going to drag inwards and create a new ring of faces. Once that ring is made, press Shift and click in the viewport and then drag downwards to hollow out the shape. Press Q to drop the tool and then delete the face at the bottom of your shape. Mesh Fusion likes airtight meshes, so now we need to close up the hole at the back of our mesh. To do this, press 2 to enable edge selection mode and then select both rings of edge loops by double clicking an edge, holding down shift and then double clicking the other edge. With both rings selected, go back to the edge tab and activate the bridge tool. Click in the viewport to create a bridge and now our mesh is airtight. All we need to do now is create some safety edge loops using the add loop tool and then position it so it reflects the reference image and we can start subtracting. Once that's been placed correctly, double click the fusion item to select the source mesh and hold down shift and select the diamond mesh that we just made, then apply a subtraction operation. Now that we have the first diamond cut out, we can unhide the one that we duplicated and then resize and reposition it so that it fits snugly in the outline diamond. Once it's sized and positioned correctly, 
double click the fusion item to select the source mesh, hold down shift and select the diamond and then apply a subtraction operation. All right, so with that, there's only two things that are left to do and then we're done. If I take a look at the reference image, inside the circle cutout, there's an additional bit of geo nestled inside. Because we don't actually have any geo in that area anymore, we'll be adding mesh to our midsole. To do this, I'm going to select that ellipsoid that we used earlier to cut out our outsole in the items list, and then use the Fusion Utilities menu to duplicate it as a non-fusion item. Once that's been duplicated, I'm going to scale it so it's a bit smaller than our cutout, and then double click the midsole fusion item to select the source mesh. With both meshes selected, apply an addition operation. Because we use the ellipsoid to add geo, that addition is actually now sticking out of the bottom of our outsole. Again, this is a really easy fix. All we need to do is double click the ellipsoid to select the source mesh and then shift double click a patch that was created by the bottom cutter of our outsole. Once we've got both source meshes selected, we need to click the Trim button in the Fusion tab. This operation will shave off all the extra geo, and now we don't have anything protruding anymore. So now, the only thing that's left to do is create the text that's going to go on the shoe. We could do this with the usual Subtract slash Add options, but I think this is a good opportunity to show off how mesh fusions and bossing tools work. First, we need to create our text. To do this, Press N to create a new mesh item and then rename it. In the Mesh Operations window, click the Add Operator button and create a text operation. In the Properties tab, type in your text and select your font. We're also going to change the output from Text Polygon to Bezier Curve. Because we're working with a mesh operator, to be able to scale and reposition our mesh, we need to add a transform effector. Once that's been added, we need to rescale and reposition the text. The reference image actually has the text on the bottom of the shoe sole, but I'm actually going to reposition the text so it's on the side of the midsole, but feel free to place it wherever. Once the text is positioned, double click the midsole fusion item to select the source mesh, and then shift click the text so both are selected. Once both are selected, go to the fusion tab and apply a two-sided surface strip. So, automatically, the surface strips around the text are way too thick. To fix this, we're going to double click the surface strips that make up the text and then tick the Override Defaults option in the Properties panel. Once that's been enabled, we can use the Strip Width parameter to thin out the surface strips. Once they're thinned out, we can start embossing. So, before we can emboss, there are a couple things that we need to set up. First off, select your text mesh in the items list and tick the Enable Embossing option in the Properties tab. Once that's ticked, you'll notice that there are a couple options for embossing now, but we can't actually use them until we also enable embossing in our Fusion item. So to do that, select the Fusion item in the Items tab and then tick the Enable Embossing option in the Properties panel. Now that we have embossing enabled, let's go back to the text mesh item and have a play about. The two parameters that we want to be using are Inward and Middle Offset. Inward Offset will bring everything inside your surface strips inwards or outwards depending on the value, while Middle will bring the surface strip itself inward or outward depending on the value. So for where I've placed my text, I want to emboss outwards but not too far. So I'm going to set my Inward Offset to 1mm and then set my middle offset to 500 UM. And with that, that's everything finished. The last thing I want to do is convert my fusion items into meshes. To do this, I'm gonna select one of my fusion items in the items list and then scroll to the bottom of the properties panel. Under the output mesh submenu, I'm gonna set the mesh roll to air type final and then press dupe and convert to mesh. I'm then going to rename my mesh using the name parameter and then press the create mesh button. I'm leaving the duplicate original parameter ticked just so that I still have a copy of my fusion mesh in case I ever need to make any changes. I'm then going to quickly repeat this process with my other fusion item and with that we're all done. 
Thank you for watching this course on Mesh Fusion in Modo and be sure to check out learn.foundry.com forward slash Modo for more information on the tools that I've used in this video, more tutorials and the user guide.